Rio de Janeiro, vão gravar o que será o próximo CD ao vivo. Então, não percam, tem várias participações, o Fernandinho Abreu, enfim. Vai ser isso, vai ser gravado dia 29, que é depois da manhã, não é isso? Ou é amanhã? É depois da manhã. É por aí, é por aí. Dia 29, no Canecão. E agora vamos conversar com o pessoal do Deep Purple, please. Vocês estão todos com fone de ouvido aí, que a gente vai fazer essa entrevista na base da tradução simultânea. O que vocês não entenderem, vocês façam de conta que entenderam, porque vai passar aqui também legenda, subtítulos, quando vocês estão em casa, aí vocês veem aquilo e dizem, ah, era isso que eu não ouvi direito, tá? Uh, so how's everything? It's, I love this hat, really. I've been rushing I, about all day, so I thought I'd put it on. Can I take a look at it? Yeah, can, sure. Can I, sure? Well, yeah, sure. Let's see how how is your head. Oh. <laughs> you got a big head too. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> you know that our director here, this is a 59-60. Our director, Willem, has a head like a, oh. a watermelon, really? yeah. which I thought was the biggest head I ever seen in my whole life. But there is a uh, 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 journalist here that works with me also. His head is like that. It's a what? That's normal. I think it's a 70. It's some, something like that. He can't put your earphones. For a journalist, that's normal. Yeah. It's normal. For a journalist, yeah. So how many times have you been here already? Uh, nine and Brazil? a half. Six, <laughs> six, 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 Right. And amazing how the crowd uh, sings along, and they, they love you, they love you here in Brazil. I mean, they love you everywhere, it's but here's for sure. Yeah. It's a fantastic atmosphere. They sing not only the words, they sing the, the riffs and the, the refrains and everything else. They sing the rhythms, it's great. Amazing. Fantastic. And it, it was really a great pleasure to see you here. And uh, you played Smoke on the Water, a song that... Uh, has one of the most famous guitar riffs ever. And uh, it happened, uh, it was inspired on a fire in Montreux during a mm. Montreux festival. How, how, how that happened? We were watching Frank Zappa playing the last show of the season. We were going to move into the place the next day yeah. to start recording Machine Head. Mm -hmm. And uh, during the concert, somebody walked in with a flare gun and two flares went into the back of the building. And it was a wooden building, and it caught fire very quickly. Uh, it was it a flare? A flare gun. A flare yeah. gun yeah. started off. Yeah, it was, it was just, I don't think it was intended uh, as anything other than just a sort of happening, but uh, it caught fire, and it was amazing. We went, everyone was evacuated. We went down the Lake Geneva, watched the wind blow the smoke and the flames across Lake Geneva, hence the title, Smoke on the Water. It's the smoke of the, the building on Lake Geneva. And who had, who had the idea for the title? Roger Which Glover. Yeah? Yeah. Actually, it came to me in a dream. What were you dreaming about? I dreamt it. I've no idea. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> Mind you, he lives in the dream anyway. <laughs> well, <laughs> so you woke up with, this idea, with the idea for... I, I, for I woke now. up and I, I said the words out loud to no one else in the room. And I just... I, I you, are sli you are sleeping alone? I know, yeah. Strange, but true. That's yeah. very strange. <laughs> okay, it's one of these days. And then uh, you came up with a title. It, well, I don't know. The title just came to me, and I, you know, I, mm -hmm. I didn't know what it meant. 
until a little while later and we were writing the lyrics and we thought, let's write, write a song about what happened to us. Well, then I, I think this was, a, this was a, an, an amazing uh, experience to see all that, mm. the, the fire and from the lake to see all the, the, the smoke. Well, the, the lyrics ended up being the story of the making of the record, all the, the moving right. away from the casino to the Grand Hotel and all the difficulties that happened in between. And uh, so it's, it's very much a biographical lyric about Machine Head, the album. Yeah, that's, that's fantastic. Mm. Tell me something. Well, uh, what is or what... Uh, do you remember what was the biggest uh, disaster doing a big show, a big rock show... Uh, in the United States, what was it? Was one of the, I don't know, the Rolling Stones? No, the uh, the Altamont. Altamont. We had a pretty big one in Chile, in yeah. Santiago, yeah, what a couple happened? years what ago. Happened? <coughs> We're playing in a football ground, rock, football ground, and um, they they let the crowd in early, uh -huh. and they rushed to the centre uh, part where the uh, lighting towers were, and they climbed up one side, not both sides. Both sides would have been okay, but they climbed up, and you could see it. As the crowd was rushing in, we go, oh no. And the whole thing collapsed, crumbled, where there were God. 100 people up there. It was, it was awful, terrible. Fortunately, nobody was killed, but it was an incredibly uh, terrifying experience. We, you know, you think about all the tons of equipment that's hanging in the sky yeah. above the stage every yeah. night, and uh, we're, we have the most fantastic crew that we travel with. They're amazing. Yeah, and, uh, uh, yeah I, know. I know that. So it's, uh, you, you trust them with your life, you know, and the. the trust the audience and the, everyone with the lives of the professionals that put these sure, shows together. Sure. But hopefully these things don't happen too often. No, thank God. No, I've seen your crowd uh, working here in Pacaembu and mm. I was seeing the, the, the mm. show from the stage mm. and it's the uh, amazing professionals. They, mm. right, uh, we you, couldn't work with you can, you can relax, come in, just yeah. do your show because you know everything will Absolutely. be... Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you, you talk about Frank Zappa. So, uh, what do you think of Frank Zappa? Because for me, it was a, uh, uh, a moment in the, in the history of, of uh, music, uh, for me, very important, with, uh, with the first albums, with, uh, my, st still with the Mothers of Invention. It was something that really uh, amazed me. And uh, how do you think of after, after the Mothers? You could, I mean, Flo and Eddie were in the band that night. Um, mm -hmm from the Turtles, but you could ask any musician about Frank Zappa and they'll all have something to say about Frank Zappa. They'll all have something respectful to say about Frank Zappa and they'll all have something about how Frank Zappa affected their lives in one way or another, small way or a big way. So he was a very significant musical figure. In, uh, what the, how did he affect your life, for instance? Well, I think uh, as far as uh, the... Um, the <laughs> to be honest, it was Wild Man Fisher. It was his ability as a producer to see things in impossible situations yeah. and make something of it and to make a dream come true. Um, and that was just one tiny aspect of his musicianship. Right. But I think uh, also the fact that he decided that if you couldn't find a chord ugly enough to play it, you just had to stuff a giraffe with cream and with whipped cream. And uh, he, he had a, a kind of an, an avant-garde approach to music. And, to yeah. life. And I, and, but he was a wonderful musician. He's a dreamer. What do you think about Frank Zappa? The drummer or the dreamer? No, the dreamer. <laughs> First the dreamer. Um, pretty much what Ian says. Uh, just musically, he, uh, he opened a lot of doors. And he did it with uh, irreverence. You know, he did right, it with, yeah. with no respect to what had gone before. He, he broke new ground. So. And he had a lot of humor in everything yeah. he did. Yeah. And the drummer. Well, I think what he did, he looked at the limitations of what music was mm. becoming in different boxes. He said, well, there are no, there are no rules anymore. Right, but what, what was it? Uh, how was the first impact when you heard? There was a record called uh, an album called Peaches, uh, a track called Peaches on Regalia, mm -hmm. which is uh, Hot Rats. Hot Rats, the album. It's just an amazing piece of music with an amazing drummer on it. But the invention of all the musicians he worked with was just—it inspired you to try things that maybe you didn't try before. Yeah. Because he said there are no rules. Anything. Yeah. Goes. It started. It started even with the with the cover of the albums. Yeah. Right. Because the, I, I remember the first impact I had was just looking yeah. at the, the the cover of the album. I said, I, I, I gotta have this. Yeah. Let's see. You are. In, let's see the impression of everyone. The first. The first impact. The first impression after hearing Frank Zappa. For me, the. 
the biggest impact he had.